Let's talk about like big data and, and management. So here we have a, another demo um, showcasing really the, the uh, dashboard for a digital factory. And so we have a bunch of information being displayed, energy consumption, what we, what we expect uh, the output of this factory to be. You know, if you were here last week, we, we talked through this, so this, this won't be too new to you, um, but it really showcases bringing that MakerBot in with a tremendous number of other machines and show what the digital factory is possible, or what, you, what you can do with our technology to, to model, to navigate, um, and to control your digital factory and be able to visualize that data. So uh, it's all about the 3D. We, we bring in um, our, our 3D view here, being able to show a layout of the, the entire factory with a uh, a number of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, robotic systems as well as CNC machines. And I think there's a bunch of maker bots in there as well. Uh, this is being, all this data is being brought in using Hoops Exchange and being visualized with our, our web technology, Hoops Communicator. Um, we have a list of, of a couple hundred different machines that exist in this space. We can select on one of the, the uh, welding robots here in this list and it, we're able to automatically zoom to its location. We can do that with, with multiple um, different machines as, as well and kind of step through and, and, and look at your factory this way, as well as overlay uh, their utilization, what else is, is going on in that space. Uh, let's take it to a full screen view and, and uh, be able to really immerse ourselves and walk through the factory. Uh, now, you see a MakerBot there. We have a tremendous number of machines. We're able to navigate that, but we're doing a fair amount of, of processing on top of Hoops Communicator in order to allow us to do that. So um, some, of, some of the work was making simplified versions of those machines. And then as we approach them or we ask for, for the particular machine, we're able to load in a, a higher fidelity version of it. Uh, here we've, we've uh, highlighted the uh, problematic machines and displayed a, a, a small chart above it that allows us to get real-time information about what's going going on with, with either that machine or be able to quickly isolate problematic machines and be able to, to troubleshoot them. A few other things that we're doing is, is animations. We're, we're changing the way in which uh, the animations are being sampled in order to improve performance as, as well. But let's dig down into one of those machines. We can select it. We'll go to it. It, it loads that machine. The, the, the full fidelity, uh, uh, high uh, um, tessellated view. We're able to see that here in, in the preview as, as well as in, in our main view. But we can do interesting things now with that because we have all of the data for that assembly. Uh, in, up in the, the right, we have um, a, a bill of material or, or, um, or kind of a, a segmented part of the bill of material for that particular assembly. We're able to select on, let's say the driller uh, and be able to display just that part here in the preview window. We're able to highlight it in the main, uh, the main window and then be, be able to provide some information around what, what is this part doing? What are the faults per month? When was it last serviced? And be able to bring in additional data and, and augment the 3D with that and be able to give you access to all of this maintenance information or IoT data. Uh, here's another case. We have a, a number of messages. Maybe a technician has been out on the, the floor and says, this, this part really needs to be replaced. On their tablet, they're able to, to um, redline it and highlight it and kind of anchor where this is. Um, and now here I'm going in and, and selecting that markup and saying, oh yeah, that's, that's a particular part. Let's take a, a, a greater look at this machine, load in the, the full assembly here. And, and now it's modeled down to, to the individual nut of the individual bolt. And I can kind of investigate how to maintain this. Uh, here's, here's Tony's MakerBot again. Maybe these fans are too loud, so there's a, a piece of a markup there or, or a, a, um, a ticket that's been created saying, hey, we need to um, maintain this machine. Let's, let's go do that. I can load it again in the, the, the 3D preview here, both in, in the preview window and, and in the, the 3D space. But since this is a dashboard and, and some organizations do run um, different factories, we've actually gone to a different site that that we've built up. Uh, here's, here's, let's say, the French site. We see an army of those maker bots in, in the background, uh, but then also we have these kind of large machines here in the foreground. And in fact, it, when I started at TechSoft, it was this machine, uh, we, it was really impressive to just load one machine into um, uh, a desktop session. So this, this machine has over uh, 40,000 individual parts, and I think we have like five or six of them here. 
um, and, and hundreds of thousands of triangles by the time you load it. So just a, a number of different ways to kind of uh, switch between the two different sites very quickly, be able to show you what is possible with, with animating um, and navigating your, your, your 3D data and be able, to, be able to kind of connect all of the dots and, and bring this all together uh, and, and be able to visualize uh, and, and work with it.